This is the 2023 Exploring Physics paper from OCR and these are the multiple choice questions. I've worked through them in this video but if you want to find the full video where I go through the entire paper and also the downloadable uh, work solutions that I've prepared you can find all of that over at alevelphysicsonline.com. So here we go with the 2023 Exploring Physics paper uh, just going through some of the answers. Uh, which of these is the base unit? Um, well, the answer is A, because we've got the amp, one of the seven base units, like kilogram, meter, second, and so on. Um, meter squared, although we've got the meter, because it's squared, that's not the base unit. And of course, we have these derived units for the joule and the newton, both of which I'm sure uh, you'll soon start to know off by heart. Uh, so we have A to begin with. Um, the next one doesn't come up that often, to be honest. It's about, it's about the percentage difference. And the way you can work this out is you look at the difference between their experimental value, uh, which was 10.20, uh, and the accepted or the true value. So we just looked at the difference between these two numbers, and then we divided by the accepted or the true value, multiplied by 100, and this gave me an answer of 3.98. Uh, so the answer, uh, the closest one of these, was C, so about 4%. Now, when there are questions where you've got to look at which ones are true or not, I would say don't look at the answers first of all, just look at each statement and if you agree with it, tick it um, and obviously you can put a cross if you don't agree. So um, we've got the first one which is true. Um, neutrons are subject to the weak nuclear force only. Uh, that's not true because neutrons are hadrons and therefore there's this strong interaction, the strong force that they experience, that one there isn't true. Um, but it's the weak nuclear force within inside the neutron that causes a change of quark type. So that one is true as well. So basically now we know that one and three are correct. We can just see which of those that applies to. And the answer is C. Right, this one here. Um, I find that these questions where you've got something in kilowatt hours tend to be pretty straightforward most of the time. Uh, first of all, um, we just want to look at the total energy used, which is going to be the power times time. Now, when I use this equation here, I put my power in kilowatts and I put the time in hours. So it's 0 0.2 times 1.5, which is 0 0.300 kilowatt hours. And if we know that it's 13 pence per kilowatt hour, we just multiply this number by 13 to get 3.9 pence, uh, which is A. So this one over here, uh, again, just be careful of your powers of 10. And I would say if you're going to do the calculation, write out the power in kilowatts and the time in hours. Number five, um, actually quite a nice question. Um, if it's a nucleus, it must have a positive charge. And that means we can then use Fleming's left-hand rule. Uh, so conventional current is positive, uh, effectively the, the direction that positive charges are moving. So that's going to be in this direction. We've got the field lines as dots, so they're coming towards us. So that's our conventional current there. And that means my thumb is pointing in this direction. I'm sure if you did this in the real exam, you'd have a whole exam hall of people using their left hands. Um, and that means there's going to be a force down. So the answer is A down the page. Now, the more work you do in physics, the more questions you see, the more you'll be familiar with just a few of the isotopes used in medical physics. Uh, technetium uh, 99M. The M stands for metastable. And that refers to the stability of the nucleus. Now, when it um, emits some radiation, it becomes technetium-99 plus gamma. So we've got a gamma photon being emitted from within the nucleus. Uh, that makes it more stable without changing the number of protons or neutrons. Um, and therefore, the answer is D. Now, some of that is just a bit of something you probably remember. And of course, you might uh, realise where this is used in medical traces. This one here, a uh, lovely question. Um, we've got the power that we need, that we've been given here. So we've got our power, we've got uh, the resistance which is given to us, and we want to know the value of V. So the thing that links these together is P equals V squared over R. Rearrange, put the numbers in, and it's 141. So about 140 uh, is the closest answer, so the answer is C. Now number eight, I got it wrong when I first did it. In actual fact, only 25% of the students who did the real paper actually got the correct answer. Um, and the reason is I've seen similar questions all the time that talk about the resistance of this. And effectively, we can say if we double the length, we're going to double the resistance. 
If you double the diameter, we're going to increase the area by four, so that would decrease the resistance by four. But the question is about resistivity. And that's going to be the same because it's made out of the same copper metal. So for this, the resistivity doesn't change, it's just a material property, so it's going to be one to one. Now, I think that was a, a good example of where you need to read the full question and make sure you're not answering what you think it's going to be answering, but you're actually answering what it's asking you. So number eight was particularly tricky because only 25% of the population got this correct, but everybody, when it's explained to them, knows what the correct answer is. We then have a question about uh, two positive charges separated by a certain distance. The force between them, uh, again, you know this, this is just in the equation sheet, QQ over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. Um, it takes a while to kind of actually write this out. So it might be that you just work straight into your calculator, but you know, this is the way to get the answer. Um, so we've got the charge on the positron, and then we've got the charge on the helium nucleus. So that's gonna be a charge of plus two. Um, and then we just divide that by the distance in meters squared. Uh, a very, very small force of uh, 1.15 times 10 to the minus 22. The, they're obviously all small numbers, but the answer here is D. Uh, for number 10, um, again, I think a diagram always helps. So it says we've got um, a tube closed at one end. So that's my tube over here. Now, if we've got that, we're always going to have a node at the closed end and an antinode at the open end. And then I just put um, in the kind of the picture of the wave here. So effectively, we go from a node up to an antinode. Now, that's going to be equal to a quarter of the wavelength. So the length of the tube is equal to the wavelength over four. So that means the wavelength is going to be equal to four times this length, if we imagine it. So um, the number of nodes inside the tube is going to be one, which is this one over here. So it can't be D. And the wavelength is going to be 4L, so it can't be 2L. And that means the only correct answer for this is C. For number 11, which only about 33% of students got correct, this thing here was where they made the mistake. Now, of course, we know that uh, the wavelength is going to be shorter when the light is traveling slower in glass. We also know from um, the fact that N air over N glass is gonna be one, the refractive index in air, divided by 1.15, the refractive index in glass. So we can just rearrange that to make this. So that means number two can't be correct. But this last statement is where most people got thrown because normally, the angle theta that's mentioned is the critical angle or the angle of incidence, but here they gave the value of theta two as this angle between the surface or the interface between these two materials and the line. So I think that's what's through most people. Now, of course, we know that uh, the critical angle uh, is equal, or sine of the critical angle is one over n, so we can work at the critical angle as 41.47. Now that means theta must be bigger than 90 minus 41.47. So theta two is gonna be bigger than 48. And that's because no um, total internal reflection occurs. It's only when the value of theta two is less than 48 that we then have an angle above the critical angle and therefore uh, we'd have this refracted, sorry, reflected ray of light on the inside. So that's actually a true statement. So the answer then is one and three are correct, and the answer is D. A tricky one that caught out lots of people, as did this question here. Now we know at this time, the amount of flux that's actually being cut is zero. So again, we might um, you know, just put in some kind of really simple kind of field lines to kind of uh, show what's being cut. Now at this instant, instance, no flux is being cut, but the rate of flux change is going to be the maximum because you know in the small amount of time it's going to cut a lot of this whereas when it gets to this point although it's cutting the maximum amount of field lines the change in the number of field lines being cut is at its minimum so uh, effectively this point here is when we're going to have a maximum value for the emf that's being generated and therefore the answer must be a that's where we've got the maximum output from that generator this one here, again, um, relatively straightforward thing, but what we're looking at is the change in energy. And that's gonna be QQ over four pi epsilon naught R. And we're looking at the difference between the two. Now, 
Again, this is actually a relatively straightforward calculation. Um, we've got all the data in the question. We've got femtometers, so that's going to be 10 uh, to the minus 15. So you've got to remember your prefixes. Um, and it's basically a lot of stuff you've got to put in your calculator. When you do the mathematics, we get this answer here of 8.76 times 10 to the minus 14, which is approximately 10 times 10 to the minus 14, or 1 times 10 to the minus 13. And that's why for here, the answer is D. But that was a particularly difficult question as well. This one here, a bit more straightforward. I'd say when you've got questions about uh, transformers, it's always good to kind of note in the question which is VP or NP or NS and so on. So we've done all of that. Um, we know that uh, we can then work out the secondary potential difference, which is just going to be 40 volts. And then we've got our standard equation for anything to do with electricity, V equals IR. We know the potential difference. We know the resistance of the one kilo ohm resistor. And therefore, we can just work out the current as 0 0.040 amps, which is, in this case, B. And for number 15, um, this one here, if you know the physics, easy marks. So the first one is Lenz's law. The second one is Coulomb's law about the interaction of these two charged uh, particles. Um, this one over here is Faraday's law, which is kind of what we used in question 13. And the last one is just called the law of conservation of energy. There's no scientist, um, scientist name attributed to that. So here, the only correct answer is C, and therefore the answer is C.